two. Here it goes. Sure you can do this. Yesterday, I am going to be saving every bloody time it offers. <laughs> Especially next time around, because I'm also bad with Igus, just like Naoto. <laughs> Labrys and Kurija san! Welcome back, you guys! Together, with Labrys, we head towards the rooftop where there's supposedly an exit to the real world. A small crowd welcomes our arrival. Some of them I haven't met yet met in person. If I recall correctly, the energetic girl with the short hair is Chie Satanaka. The well but young man must be Kanji Tatsumi. And that must be the general. I mean, the. The speech is no different than the imposter's, but the absence of that evil demeanor, the real one is much more adorable. All the faces I saw in the video are here, with a smile on every one. Whoa! You really are a robot! Hey, uh, can I touch you? Chie san, that's a bit impolite. It's hard enough for straining myself already. <laughs> <laughs> you said restrain yourself. Um, well. I give Lapras an encouraging smile. She didn't be afraid to enter their circle. None of them are reje rejecting her after I'm all. I'm sorry I caused you guys trouble. I, I, um. Yeah, I want to talk to you about that. That Grand Prix was you, right? Yeah, yeah. Wasn't a half bad idea. Fighting to see who's the strongest man was awesome. Uh, what? Kanji's right, but you should have invited me too. Uh, sorry. Ah ah ah! I won't forgive you until you say I really like you, you big bear of a man. All sexy like that. Teddy. Guys, stop making it even worse. Sorry we're starting off like this. In any case, I'm really glad you're all right. I got you to thank for that. They take very naturally to someone who isn't human. Great job, Mitsuru. But man, talk about a rowdy bunch of students. Still, they are kind. I look at Labyrinth, surrounded by new friends. I wish I could join them, but part of me would rather watch over them for now. And there are things I still need to consider. <gasps> Is something the matter? I'm not good at relying on others. My responsibilities are so heavy that I don't even think of trusting others with them. I've been told it before, but it never gets easy. Why not think of things more simply? Hmm. When something cannot be accomplished alone, there is no other choice but to trust in others to help, good or bad, it is inevitable. Then why not accept it and move forward? You aren't alone either, after all. I can't keep myself from smiling at the truth that I never would have come uh, up with. You're right. It's not difficult at all when put that way. It's just as I was saying about companionship being a guide. Indeed, I'm thankful for my friends. They say the things I cannot, and take me outside of myself with new perspectives. I'm sure that the same principle will save Lappers from straying from her path. Although, I think again about the case. Now that Labrys is safe, there's another issue. The mastermind was not Labrys, but her shadow. However, 
Her shadow emerged and began to act only after she entered the TV world. It's hard to reconcile that with Lapras taking the initiative to escape. Come to think of it, there's something else that can't be explained if we assume Lapras was, was behind Labris. there. Was truly the mastermind here? Huh? What are you getting at? Why did Lapras choose them? Where did Lapras learn of them? It's the suit that Yasa got me high that troubled me. I can't see why Lapras would have selected them. I thought they might have sensed the changes in Lapras and caused this world on their own, but no. Not to Oh, I missed one. The video that brought them here called them all by name. Not to mention the shadow took the appearance of General Teddy from the start. Neither would be possible unless she had identified them beforehand. Even we didn't know about them or about this world inside the TV. How did Labrys discover all this? Yeah, I can't explain it either. I still have my doubts regarding the hijacker's mental state. Their memories were so muddled that they couldn't even explain themselves. Do, do Labrys' abilities extend that far? Oh, really? That's unfortunate. The more I think about it, the more questions arise. There must be some larger planet here that work after well, the all. The fastest way to find out is to just ask her. Hey, Labrys! Akihiko. Is this better? Whoa. Can you hear me? What about now? Okay, good. That's what I was hoping to hear. Akihiko's loud voice catches not only Lapras' attention, but the high schoolers as well. I had hoped to keep them away from this, since they were innocent bystanders. Standers. Akihiko seems not to notice my ears. How did you wake player. up? How did you find out about the TV world? About... this place? Uh... <laughs> Lapras abruptly stops moving, just before starting to convulse and taking a leap backwards. It happened so suddenly that even the students standing some distance away raised their voices in alarm. Lapras! Get back! Oh, we're back to the... this... Song. As soon as Akihiko cries out, I just run towards the students to protect them. I keep a careful eye on Labras, whose face has gone blank, and put some distance between us. My fears have been realized. Labras reaches for the axe on her back and swings it without hesitation. Is she malfunctioning? No! Someone's hijacked her! What? If we're all here, the shadow is defeated, and someone is still hijacking her? Then... I know you're there! Who are you? Show yourself. I expected a response, but the source of my answer came Show as a shock. Show myself. <laughs> How <laughs> cold. You, you treat, treat me as, as if I, I were a stranger. stranger. That voice! A pool of darkness emerges in one of the nearby no shadows. Way. kirijo sans shadow? It has my appearance, my face. It's me in every way, save for the unnatural gleam in its golden eyes, and the mocking expression it makes. <laughs> Do you Do not, not recognize your own face? face? I am you. Still, my heart is calm. In fact, her appearance may be giving me more clues to my enemy's intentions. You seem to have a penchant for deception. Unfortunately, I already know that you're the mastermind here. You were after Persona users from the start. That's why you chose this school and tampered with Labrys' memories. And you just demonstrated how you controlled those hijackers. <laughs> Very good. No wonder you managed to drive back a god once. <laughs> yes. I want them even more now. You want them? Explain yourself. Personas and shadows are one and the same. 
If I poison your hearts, I can recruit shadows with unparalleled strength. Wait, what? You mean turn our personas back to shadows? The heart is frail. Its weaknesses are never fully vanquished. Given the opportunity, it can betray you and return to darkness. This one's desire to make people suffer was perfectly suited for such a plan. Plan? You caused all this to gather strong shadows? Who are you? Sadly, it seems things won't be going according to plan this time. But I'll make use of what tools I have to the very end. This is my last chance. No, more like a marvelous entertainment. Stand, my puppet. The shadow ignores my taunts and rises his right hand towards Lavers, still collapsed on the ground. Lavers reacts to the gesture by rising up, like a puppet with no will of his own. You bastard! This form is exhausted from constant battle and will be useless as an asset, but unless you destroy it, it will keep rising up and attacking you all. What will you do? Lavers obeys the shadow's command and before to attack. It seems the enemy will do anything to rattle us. I understood that. But understanding it and forgiving it are two different things. I'll just knock her out one more time. No, don't attack her. Further damage to Lavis could put her in danger. But, uh, come on! Uh, she's all over us! Ah! Now, may you suffer and curse your fate. Relinquish your personas. At that moment, I hear a voice whisper in my mind. Huh? I stop in spite of myself. I know this voice well. Relief washes it over me to hear it. This match will end in our victory. I call to everyone Don't assembled. listen. Everyone, concentrate on avoiding her attacks. But we can't do that forever. Just try and hang in there. Trust me. I trust in you. I realize that this is an impossible demand. Everyone's already exhausted from what came before. Still, I need to buy time. Surprisingly, the first nod is neither... Nod is neither Akihigo or Ayo. Everyone, Agnes. we can take this much. Yosuke, you ready? Hell yeah, partner. Let's let Mitsuru-san do her thing. Hanamura and the others recover from their confusion at once with Narukami speaks. Interesting. He seems to be a great Akihiko, leader. Akihiko, I guess. Back them up. You got it. No one will force my sister to hurt others ever again. <laughs> you have best hurry and decide. Who will be destroyed? The shell or the lot of you? The shadow laughs triumphantly as he was striving against a wall. She's acting like a god, but she's too short-sighted for that. I sense what I've been waiting for. We've bought enough Sad time. To say, but this show is over. What? what? <laughs> Lapras comes to a halt and is released from the shadow's control. She must have been forced to exceed her limits, for she falls to the floor as if her strings have been cut. We didn't attack her at all, and she's unable so much as to break her fall. A chill goes on my spine to imagine what could have happened if we'd fought her with her full like strength. Looks like you made it in the nick of time. You saved us, Yamagishi. Are you all okay? Fuka-san! <laughs> so you had a third assistant. That voice... It's not coming from in here. Whoever it is is out there! Seriously? She can use hers in reality, too? She responds in the perfect moment of my earlier phone call, asking her to come at once. Yamagishi had a bit of initial difficulty dealing with the world so alien to her, but she adjusted quickly enough. Though she's far away, I can sense that we're under it's her protection. It's just as you thought, Mitsuru-senpai. The enemy is only mimicking your appearance. It's a fake. Very impressive to guess correctly from such a long distance away. So these are the limits of a half-broken puppet. Well, no, no matter. matter. This, this was only ever for my own enjoyment. enjoyment. You despicable monster! I, I didn't expect you to fight, fight back this hard. But, but didn't you have fun? fun? You were all taken in by an illusion. illusion. This place, these traps, everything came from your own minds. You dread, dread yourselves, most of all. <laughs> A beautiful plan, wasn't it? Your idea of beauty is rather warped. As is your plan, and your assessment of us. But your biggest mistake was that you took my form in the end. I take a step forward. Seeing this, Akihiko and Igis take a step back. They know me well. 
They can see the signs of anger be boiling within them. <laughs> Are you angry? All right, I'll play along. The show must go on, right? Don't say another word while wearing that face. I'll teach you just who it is you've made an enemy of! I don't know if it's actually that silly, he. Um, if you remember, Fuka always stayed at the entryway of Tartarus. So it seems to be their general, you know, MO that she will stay where they know it's safe. Since they had absolutely no clue what was inside the TV, they said, okay, Fuka, you stay outside where we know it's okay. Don't come in here because we don't know what's in there yet. not sure if the real world is hard to do persona stuff in she was using her persona during the dark hour all the bloody time in the real world check <laughs> this, this is fine, fine with me, me. Good, good enough for, for my purposes, purposes that i confirmed you have enough power to meet my expectations the shadow laughs as if the defeated matter not to do it not at all form. i, I doubt, doubt if there'd be any meaning in changing my appearance Sure enough, it made for a very enjoyable game. All that irritates me is having to feign cooperation with that foolish human until I obtain the one true vessel. Foolish human? I will see you in another guise next time. The real you will face the same consequences soon. Choose your last words carefully. <laughs> The laughter echoes through the room as the shadow borrowing my form disappears from the air. The reading disappeared. It didn't move, it, didn't move. it, just, it just vanished. vanished. What could this mean? <laughs> Back to square one again. Another guys, huh? Don't even think about coming around here again! What are we up against? Our enemy seems to be targeting Persona users. It seems that not even they know who the enemy is. Though, I didn't expect they would. The enemy has extensive knowledge of Lapras, something even I didn't have. There's no denying it. Whoever did this was well versed in the creature group's internal workings. Gathering power shadows? Now we know the enemy general's aim. And what do they plan to do with them? None of that matters at the moment, I suppose. I signal to Akihiko. Akihiko matches it and returns to the suit. Don't worry about it. We'll handle things from here. Wait, but it kind of said it was still after us. Of course. You should be aware that the enemy is out there. Akihiko only means that there is no need to abandon your lives to pursue it. We will do our best to ensure that no harm comes to you. That is, after all, our duty. But... I don't expect them to like my answer. But the reason I started the Shadow Operatives is to protect people from these things. The students, they're still young. They're th two years younger than you! Granting, granting my permission would only mean becoming more in inexor ugh, that word involved. Guys, let's leave this to them. You can! Are you serious? They're right that we need to go back for now. We're all at our limit. When Narukami signals to him, Hanamori's complaints fall suspiciously silent. That hardly fooled anyone. Either they take me for an imbecile, or they think it won't matter even if I do catch on. <laughs> I suppose I can live with it. If they are that determined, I am no one to dissuade them. We'll have to take care of everything before they can be involved themselves, that's all. 
Teddy jumps around, his footsteps sounding highly unnatural to catch our attention. Alrighty, attention please! The trip doesn't end until we get out of the TV! Dude, we were in the middle of a conversation. What are you doing with this ancient TV? Hang on, where'd you even get this? It's a Teddy Vision! You can get out from here! They exchange banter as if the recent problems are already long past. It's so that they can continue to be so carefree what we must fight. How's Moreover, Lavers? There wasn't much damage to her motor functions. I don't believe it will take much time to repair her. Still, the stress on her cognitive functions must have been severe. It may take some time for her to awaken. Ikus glances sadly at the Labyrinth's unmoving form in, in her arms. We must fight to prevent anyone else from being hurt like these two. This case is over for the time being. The time to save your farewells to this world. But... Ah! But a newfound resolve to fight is surging within me. My one complaint about this game is when white text goes over white backgrounds. Yeah. Whoa. Even after we return to the real world, there's no rest for the weary. The after action reports on the case, investigation leads on the culprit, there's a mountain. Here you of go, Mitsuru-san. Ah, oh, thank you. After Issuing instructions, I'm ready to take a break when Iga ser serves me a cup of tea with perfect timing. The fresh scent of Darjeeling. I take a moment to savor the mellow aroma of Muscat. That's right, spring is nearly over. I feel like I can barely keep track of the seasons we anymore. We will be leaving Inaba tomorrow. Keep that in mind when making preparations. Understood. We're rather limited here in this hotel room. Originally, I had intended to return today, but we're so tired that we had to stay the night. There's also Labrys' condition to consider. And where the heck is this hotel? I've been all over Ina, but they do not have a hotel this nice. Still mulling it over, I hear a knock at the door. It's me, Fuka. Come in. I'm sorry I had to summon you on such short notice. Oh no, it's alright. I was on vacation too, after all. How is Labrys? She's still resting. There was a lot of stress on her, so we might have to carry her out. I see. Yamagishi takes a nearby chair. It was I looked into eyes. the records. Labrys was built on a self-contradicting foundation. Self-contradicting? Unlike with Igis, when Labrys was being developed, no one had the know-how to create a personality from scratch. So... It seems like they took an actual girl's personality and used it as a base. A living girl. So that's why her heart is unexpectedly advanced. But if she had all of the original girl's memories, a contradiction would occur in her self-awareness. Normally they'd make adjustments to prevent that, but even then, they couldn't guarantee it would be completely safe. That's why Labrys was loaded with a self-deceiving function, in case a conflict arose in her self-awareness. She was deceiving herself? Then the function that interfered with our perception. It was listed as meant for infiltration, but that was a technicality. Its true purpose was a safety mechanism. She was given a heart, presupposing that it would cause conflicts with her self-awareness. I suddenly begged the heavens for forgiveness of the cruelty and injustice I performed upon her. I think that should be okay now. A hesitant voice comes from Labrys. outside. Labrys! When did you get here? Sorry to sneak up on you, but... After I faced my shadow and learned how to use my persona, it's hard to explain. But it felt like my emotions settled down. Actually, that may be what happened. Facing one's shadow could be said to be correcting one's self-awareness. That must be it. Your developers came to the decision that it was an insurmountable problem. Yet you overcame it. I approached Labrys and stroke her head. She fidgets and her eyes are cast slightly downward. How do you downward. feel? Does anything seem off? Oh, no. You guys have treated me so well, I feel kind of guilty about it. My body's all fixed up, too, so there shouldn't be any problems there. I see. Labrys' expression seems gentle. She appears to be mentally stable. I doubt there's any danger of her losing control again. I wanted to again. talk to you about where we go from here. From here? You mean, about me? Originally, we planned to take you back to the lab on Yakushima. But that was when we still thought of you as a mere object. Is that what you want to happen? 
Uh, what else is there? You could tell us what you yourself want. You do have a heart, just like us. Who knows? Maybe you could even go to school eventually. Me? Go to school? Even I guess has been to school. And that was when she knew much less about the world than you know now. Thinking back to that time is... Uh, it's rather embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, Labras falls silent in thought. To live a life no different than anyone else's. That must be exactly what she wants. Should I tell her there's no need to worry about living expenses? No, best wait for her decision. She should be the one to decide on her future. After a long while, Labra speaks School. again. It sounds great, but I feel like there's something I gotta do first. Hmm. I mean, yeah, it's been my dream for a long time to go to school, but someone's after those guys. Someone's trying to wreck their lives. I want to catch whoever it is myself. I... I want to look after those guys. Rather than being with them, she chose to protect them. It's a beautifully selfless decision. She thought of herself and chose her own path. I see no reason to deny her that. The Security Department Shadow Response Unit would be glad to have you. Welcome to the team, Lavras. I extend a hand. If she takes it, she'll be putting her ordinary life on hold for a while. I know she understands that, but she takes it anyway. I get to work with you, sister. I guess that reminds me. I am your younger sister, but I am more experienced than you. This may be somewhat confusing. <laughs> the two sisters are a bit awkward to around each other now. A new bond will form there as well. That person must make her own choice and must live her ordinary life. You can say she's truly facing herself. She'll be alright. Two of them together makes me sure. I'll give you a tour of the lab tomorrow. Make sure you're ready to write things down. Tomorrow? We're leaving Inaba already? I haven't even said goodbye. I can't leave without seeing him one more time. Oh, <laughs> that's good to hear. It means you've made some friends. Friends. I turn to I guess. Get in contact with them by whatever means you deem necessary. Understood. Hmm. How should I contact them? I only know their names. Hmm. Yamagishi, your usual method should prove effective once again. Huh? Uh, but isn't that invading your privacy? Permission granted. Remember, <laughs> we have official sanction to operate now. And after how they acted when we were parting, they'll definitely need their contact information. Yeah, that's still Inaba. That's why I was asking where, where the heck the hotel was. They won't sit quietly by, of that I'm sure. The matter is still open, after all. The mystery remained unsolved, and there are still worries nagging at me. But that's not the only legacy of this I'll case. Help look up too. Lapras breaks the file and takes Igis to the side of the computer. The bond that gave, gave her that smile, they will light our unseen path. There's no knowing yet, but where this case might lead. But the day we stop our tracks, I'm too afraid to continue, will never come. And that is Mitsuru's story. Woohoo!